What's up, guys? Welcome to The Rob Bailey Show. Today, uh, I have a very special guest, Mike Rashid. Uh, Mike's been my boy forever now, and um, he and I talk, I'd say every four months. We hang out or talk every four months, and it's like we've never missed a step. We, we, we think the same. We normally feel the same on topics, and if we don't feel the same, uh, we listen to each other's perspective, and normally we end up feeling the same at the end of it. So, um, I haven't really been very vocal about, um, I think anything going on. I sort of stayed quiet, uh, about the COVID thing, about my thoughts. And I sort of stayed quiet sort of about everything happening right now, racially. Um, I've just been sitting back and watching and like trying to take in all sides, um, digesting divisive media that tries to push you to one side and sort of just trying to like, you know, think about it and not react right away and not let emotion take over and let me drive in a certain direction. And, um, one of the things I, I just didn't, wasn't going to talk about it until I was ready. And I wanted to have a conversation with Mike. I haven't had a conversation with Mike since this started. Um, and I thought now is a great time to, I saw Mike speak up the other day on, uh, Instagram story and, it was cool. And, and honestly, like I know whatever I would speak up about, he would get behind me. So I sort of wanted to give him the platform to educate me and then, you know, educate some of the people that follow me that might not know what's going on. I know it's a a really weird time and a lot of people are being feeling like they have to choose sides and, and, and stick to this and blah, 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 blah. And, and I feel like a lot of people aren't taking a lot of time to listen And that's sort of what I want to accomplish in this podcast is I want to take some time and just listen, listen to a dude that I respect. I know he vibrates on a higher level. Um, I know he thinks constantly, he learns, he reads, and when he acts, he doesn't act based on emotion. And uh, I just want to take some time out, you know, ask him some questions. A lot of times uh, in this podcast, it sounds like I'm playing devil's advocate. And I, 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 I did that on purpose. I wanted to, um, I sort of wanted to, you know, ask against what he said or just propose the, the, the other viewpoint and then see how he responded. Um, I, I just, I felt like it was a really good opportunity to do that with someone that I respect. And I think it was a beautiful podcast. We, we cover a lot uh, Mike takes some, some storytelling time, some history time. Uh, we talk a little bit of current. Um, and then at the end of it all, I'm just, you know, reminded again, like that's my boy. So here we go. I don't know what we're going to call this podcast, but it is with my extremely successful friend, Mike Rashid, that's been through a shitload of stuff and I respect the hell out of him. Three, two, one, go. How's everything? Dude, everything's good, man. Excellent. Good. I got no complaints. Haven't cool. seen you in so long. It's been a minute. I know. It's been I know. a minute. But it's good to see you, though. Whenever I see you, it's good to see you. You're my guy. I appreciate that, man. You're my guy. I like that uh, just in that box. In that box? My man, thank you. Um, he and I had, uh, so I got my boy Jake here. He's like producing sort of, uh, or setting up all my sounds. And okay. He, uh, he and I just had a, a pretty aggressive talk um, yeah. about the state of the world. Right. Because I don't talk about it much. Yeah, I, I get that. You know what I mean? Uh, it's, 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 it's exhausting. It, it's exhausting. And uh, um, I don't like the angle that I have on the whole thing, which is like, I don't know what I'm talking about, so shut up. And I'm just like, oh, okay, well, all right. Shit. <laughs> I really listen, bro. I really respect that because it's so understandable for one to not really understand the complexities, right? And I told friends of mine, like, yo, it's kind of insulting when you say this. And they don't they they argue with me about it. I'm like, all right. I said you can say what you want, yeah. but it kind of hurts my feelings. No, and that's it. what that's what like so I have generally my own beliefs, right? And right? About this whole situation. So I sit back and I'm just watching. Like, I feel like I'm watching a fucking movie. And right. in watching this movie, I'm trying to figure out characters and why characters are acting like this. And like, 
you know, would this be different if this happened? And like, so I'm just, you know, trying to figure it all out. Like I figure everything out. And so I have sort of it figured out, but that's why, like, I haven't touched on a podcast. I'm not making posts because bro, I'm out here in Montana where literally Corona never even showed up here. Wow. I, I haven't put, I haven't put a mask on yet. Wow. I wore one once to get on airplane. I didn't close my businesses because this is America and I'm not going to close my fucking business. Right. And I don't know, man, I'm just, just out here doing it. So I'm watching all this, like I'm watching a movie and you know, I have my opinions, but I, you know, I haven't talked to anybody about it. I've talked to my brother. I've talked to Dana. I've, I watched it on the internet. It sways you any direction. And I think that like, when I saw your 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 question i was like you're the one dude i want to talk to because i respect the fuck right, out right. of you we've been right. boys for long enough that i know like you're not crazy and you know i believe in you and everything you do thank you so i'm more i'm going to show up i have my own opinions um mm-hmm. but i also want to hear from your perspective you know what i mean because i've noticed that you've you've become more vocal yeah you know and yeah. i get that I, I, i've become vocal because I have to bro. like, mm-hmm. um, I, I, one thing that's instilled in me is to always do the right thing. Right. I've always been that guy to stand up for people being bullied. Yeah. Even if it's, listen, I'll be specific. A few years ago, Bradley Martin was going hard on Devin physique. Yeah. I stood up for Devin back in the Devin days too. I didn't even know Devin. And me me neither. And Bradley, me and Bradley was boys. And I got online and I said, yo, y'all need to knock this shit off because everybody's jumping on the bandwagon now. Mm-hmm. Why didn't y'all be the first to say whatever he said? And I said, furthermore, if Brad really feels this way about this guy, talk to him in private. Don't try to air him out like this because this guy can potentially change his mind state if he's really doing something wrong. Yeah. And be a good influence on all these millions of people that follow him. Yeah. You know, he begged me to take that shit down. Like, nah, bro, it's not, nah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, and listen, if you my boy, Rob, and I can't tell you something to level you up, if you're out of bounds or something, then that's your problem. You know, yeah. We're not really friends or, or whatever. I beg people, everybody here in my circle, yo, let me know if I'm out of line. Yeah. If you give a fuck about me, let me know. Yeah, I'm good. Let me know if, you, if I'm out of line. That means you care about me. So when it comes to this situation, once again, I'm standing up for, for bullies, <laughs> for, for, for those being bullied. It just happened to be people that look like me. And it really hits me directly because I got black sons. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, a few years ago, first of all, blacks getting killed by police is nothing new to us. It's just that people are seeing it. You know what I mean? And the way in which, and there's been others that's been caught on camera, but the way that George Floyd was killed, yeah, it hit everybody hard. Yeah, I, mean, I agree. Fucking guy had his hands in his pocket with no expression on his face, like this is nothing. And I'm gonna tell you, so um, I just finished talking with um, Eric uh, Weinstein. You know him? I recognize the name, but oh, he's super dope. I'll, I'll, I'll turn you on to him. Okay. But anyway, um, we talked a few days ago. He was, you know, being very, he was being critical of the black community. And I, I was okay with it because he gets it. He's very familiar. And he looks at, we, he looks at us all as equals. So I accept it. But he was being hypercritical in areas that he wasn't, he was missing a mark, in my opinion. Okay. So I wrote him respectfully. And I, you know, because one of the things that he said was, uh, you know, people are, you know, you kind of like kind of worshiping this guy. This guy had a criminal record, yada, yada, yada. Do y'all really love him? Or, and I was like, sir, like, it's not about him per se. I have empathy for anybody who unjustly is murdered. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Even though it happens all the time, we've seen this one. And anybody that's seen that, the nature in which he was killed would have affected you. Yeah, you know 100%. I mean? yep. Somebody getting shot or whatever, but seeing that, you see his, him become lifeless. Yeah. You call him screaming for his mother. That's fucking crazy. So, and I said also another thing that hit everybody, especially the black community, it was kind of like, in a weird way, a relief 
like, well, y'all see it? Do y'all see this shit now? Okay. This shit we be talking about? You know what I mean? Yeah. So, and I'm gonna tell you something, bro. That, what you see there is a low level of, of racism that we deal with. The shit on the streets for cops. There is a targeted prosecution and unfair, like blacks and blacks and Latinos as well are like the, the, the way that the laws are written. Now, I can speak from experience with this. I had a, a case back in 2008 that is, nobody would tell you this is not just what I did. It was self-defense, it was my house. Yeah, with my that. fucking girl and my kids yep. from an intruder, right? And even the cop said, listen, any of my guys would have did exactly what you did. But in the state of Arizona, they got to match force with force. Yada, 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 yada. I'm like, what? Mm -hmm. so, so anyway, they put me in a gang unit, which I've never been in a gang in my life. Yeah. I, I had to have a separate hearing to get me out of that gang. They had to prove that I'm in a gang. Okay. Let me yeah. tell you why this is important. Because when they put a gang injunction on you, they only put that on blacks and Mexicans. Whatever your sentence is, it's an extra 10 year enhancement. So Interesting. if you do something that warrants a two year sentence, the fact that you have a gang enhancement, you're mm -hmm. doing 12 years. Okay. That's a real thing. I And I seen like, I had, you know, I had some money and, you know, you're paying for like, when people don't, you know, when you go through the legal system, you pay, a, you pay your attorney, it's a retainer. That money don't last, it goes, you know what I'm saying? So I had to pay him twice for that first hearing and then for what's after that. So and you had it would money. be so easy to not be able to defend myself from just that part of it alone. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I heard you. So, so a lot of shit is, is really set up for us to lose. And it doesn't, it, it's not like a recent thing. It started back in the day. Now, let me preface this by saying this. It's a fact that we were brought here against our will in the 1600s, right? Um, to work for free, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we became a huge staple for the economy of the South, mm -hmm. right? Um, we were given the opportunity of, to be free, to be liberated if we helped fight against the South, the Confederate, in the Civil War, right? And we did that. And Abraham Lincoln signed the Emancipation Proclamation, but we weren't free yet. We were free by legal, by, by, by law, uh, three years later with the 13th Amendment, right? But that's when shit got really crazy. <laughs> that was when the movement of white supremacy arose and what it was for was to suppress the liberation of blacks because they were so important. That free labor was so important. It was a staple to the economy of the South. They wanted to keep it the same. So that's when the Ku Klux Klan was formed. And their, their first name was uh, Ghost of the South. No, Ghost of the Confederate. That's why they wore the sheets. Yeah. Cute sheets. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but so what they would do was any, the Republican candidates that was against slavery, because at that time they were against slavery. Yeah. Um, they terrorized them, ran them out. These guys were like, like I don't even want to run. Fuck this. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Because back then, law law enforcement wasn't the same. I'm gonna get into that too. We didn't have cops back then, right? So they would do that, terrorize blacks, whatever, whatever the fuck they did. So I'm bringing up that up to to say this. We, you know, we're here. You know, we're we're a huge part. We're, we are an important part of the history of this country. You know what I'm saying? This is our country too. Mm -hmm. You know, it don't feel like it. Be, like as a black man, it don't feel like it because, you know, it's a lot of rhetoric. It's a lot of um, hijacking of messages. 
just like Colin Kaepernick when he uh, uh, did the peaceful protest of taking a knee to protest against police brutality and yeah. blacks getting killed by cops. You know, it was so frustrating for me hearing the shit everybody was saying, like anti-American, anti-military, anti-this. Yeah. Like, that's not it. Yeah. Well, he's anti should be what everybody's anti against because it happens to white people too. You know what I'm saying? So um, that kind of should be frustrating. Then, you know, the president has said some things that if you're not black, it's not even on your radar to hear it, but, you know, calling African nations shit countries. Mm. I want to do, we're going to do business with the Nordics. You know, not these shit countries. Well, he's, like, called a lot of, he's called a lot of countries shit countries, not just black countries. Okay, but, you know, it's a lot of energy, vehement energy. No, I, I think he's... He worries he's things, dick, bro. He's he not worries. A, he's not a president. Yeah, yeah he's exactly. a really good businessman. He's a bully. He he may, knows how to know. say things. He yeah. But he's he not meant to be a president. A few times. I don't know if he's that good of a businessman. He started out with a huge. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, bro. We're self-made. You know what I'm saying? He's not. Yeah. Facts. But anyway, and never file bankruptcy. Never will. You know what I mean? But anyway, uh, that's neither here nor there. A lot of times, just being honest with you, bro, with my bro, it don't mm -hmm. feel like it's that we're accepted. You know what I mean? Yeah. We are. Which, like, uh, I would have never, and that's why I'm just letting you talk. I'm not, once again, uh, yeah. you do the damn thing. But, which I would have never assumed that. Because right. I, I see you and I, and that's why this is, like, so hard for me. Because I see you and I as the exact same fucking person. Right. When we walk into places, when we go to expos, the same yeah. amount of people care about you. You get just as much respect as me. We get the same exact fucking treatment. We go out to eat. We get, and like, I just don't, I don't see it with right. you specifically. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I can't speak for anybody, but like, I'm talking to you. So right. I don't see that. You're not that. And it, and it, it, not, so it blows my a, mind a little bit to hear you say like, you, you not, don't feel like this is a, your country. And I understand. You're not a racist person. Yeah. So. You're not going to look at me as less than a human or less than an equal, and I respect that. Um, but there's a lot of people that it's in their heart, and this, yeah. you know, we've been in, in this country for 400 years, right? And they were taught that we were animals, we were cattle, we were property, right? So when we got our freedom, and then we got the right to vote, it had to be like two black dudes for one vote because we were considered all right. Well, that Three fifths of a man, I guess. Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's crazy. Division. Man, even in like, you know, there was a big movement with um, eugenics, and that was the cleansing, the master race, and that was with Hitler. Um, I mean, even Winston Churchill was on the same shit. Even though he defeated Hitler in some of those battles, he was trying to be the British Hitler. You know what I mean? Winston Churchill. So this is go back in history. He was a openly violently racist dude you know what i'm saying and they had this notion of the perfect human this master superior race right and it was even in charles darwin some of his writings with uh evolution you know what i mean which when i learned that i was like fuck i like darwin but he yeah. even that shit that kind of stuff has been swept under the rug because it's so it's an embarrassing part of european and american history you know what i'm saying yeah. how they looked at us, but they looked at us as subhuman, you know? Yeah. But, um, and even like going back to the notion of the, the whole situation on police, it wasn't police back then. Back then it was like, if somebody did some foul shit, you will hire somebody, some contractors, like a bounty hunter to go find them. And other than that, they enacted the police, modern day police started out as slave patrol, just patrolling blacks, you okay. know what I'm saying? Yeah, making sure they don't try to rebel on plantations, not stay in line. You know, yeah, honestly, it was a lot of divide and conquer on the plantations amongst blacks, but then they also had additional slave patrol to make sure we don't, you know, get out of line. Listen, all of that shit happened. It is what it is. Every time there was a movement of for something fair to happen, civil rights, what have you, the racist voice got louder and louder. You know what I mean? Like I said, back when the abolishment of slavery, that's when the Ku Klux Klan arose. Um, you know, during the civil rights movement, Martin Luther King, he was on some peaceful shit, but he was so effective and he was striking a chord with white, black, everybody. 
get this nigga out of here. You know what I'm saying? He got killed. Um, you know, even like recent times, like Barack Obama getting uh, elected as president, bro, racist people got loud and bold. It hurt my, I was like, fuck, bro. We just went backwards, you know what I'm saying? So, and I see a push now. It may look peachy, like people coming together over the George Floyd situation, but I see a lot of shit, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. so I, and I that's, I have a very wide variety of friends and I've learned that yeah. on Instagram. And it's like, right. I look at it one day and it's like, it, I'm like, wow, my friends list is wild. Right. And then it's wild the other way the other day. And it's like, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, I get the history. I, I, I think the history, I've understood all that. I don't know the details. I know America was fucked up. Mm -hmm. I know that there's a lot of bad shit that happened and I'm more the big thing that I'm confused about now is looking at current day, where we're at right now. And like, so what is the move? Cause I, I have my opinions on what's broken, you know? And I'm worried that people don't have the mental tools anymore. I'll just say that anymore. Like the average person doesn't have it. I think I, I, I think I agree with you on that. I do agree with you on that, but it's going to take them seeing the, the leaders doing the right thing for them to just fall in line and follow, you know? Um, here's the thing. If you really think about it, like there's a lot of white people. There's a lot of white people that I know. I'm like their first black friend. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Yeah. I mean, until I went to college, I had no white friends. Uh -huh. Cause when I grew up, it was just black and Puerto Ricans in Brooklyn. Yeah. It was Jews, but they used to stay to themselves. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Um, so I understand that, right? And and my white friends, I, I remember I would ask, like, hey, if you didn't know me, you walking down the street and I'm walking this way, would you cross the street? They're like, yeah. It isn't, I get it. You know what I'm saying? It's unfamiliar to you. It's actually an intelligent thing. Keep yourself safe. You're you're a, an intimidating dude covered in tattoos. If you were a white dude, if you were the same exact dude as white, I would still I would not now because I feel like I'd be like this guy probably knows who I am. I'm gonna say what's up. But an average person, even if you're a white dude, I mean, I'm once again, I'm not trying to play devil's advocate, but yeah, I get it. You know, I, you're yeah. you're a jacked fucking dude, and people cross the street for me. Right, I get that, but I'm just saying, like, you know, race is an issue. One hundred percent. Yep. And people won't get over it until they start. We black, white need intimate relationships with each other, intimate yeah. dealing with each other to really get each other. You yeah, know what I'm saying? I agree. Listen, I have a the time of my life with y'all. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? We're all people, we're all in good people. And I love it, you know. So um my circle is very it's I just podcasted with a Jewish man and a, a, a Middle Eastern and me, right? Yeah. That's America. You yeah. know what I'm saying? 100%. A melting pot of, of everybody. Listen, what makes this country so great is the fact that we are literally, it's a land of immigrants and we are a melting pot of so many dope cultures. You don't have that nowhere. No. You know, Germany is a German. Mexico is a Mexican. You know what I mean? That's why when people try to compare us to other countries and they're like, oh, well, healthcare works in Denmark or this works. It's like, yeah, it's because there's literally one type of person there. Of course right. they all get along. And that's okay. Yeah. yeah I still want to be here. Everyone right. wants to be here. Everyone that's even talking shit on America right now, those motherfuckers here. are still flying to LA. They're still flying to New York. They vacation yeah. here and they, wow. you know, so yeah. we got it. And, and that's, that's where I'm at is like, I know we got a really good thing in America. I also yeah. know that everything's broken. Healthcare is broken. The government's broken. The police force is broken. It needs restructuring. I'm not saying it once again to all my police people out there. I know not everyone's bad, but the fact that like most people aren't like Jake and I were just talking about why most of these things escalate are because the cops aren't in shape. They don't know how to handle themselves. So the second that shit starts going down, the, okay. the cop that's overweight, he's too tired. He tires. He gets all of a sudden he's no longer in control of the situation because he doesn't train and he has to go right to his last resort. And like, 
you can look at that and be like, well, he shouldn't have been fighting the cop. 100% should not have been fighting the cop. But the cop also should have been able to pull his hands behind his back and not been so weak. You know? This, this, this scared me. So back in like 2009, 2010, when I was a personal trainer, mm -hmm. when I trained a lot of, my demographic is cops. Like they mm -hmm. fuck me. So I was training some guys, uh, CHP, California Highway Patrol. And these guys were dope. They were awesome. And we was doing like legit, like met, metabolic conditioning, then fucking fight training and going out to play CNS and then having them hit hit pads and shit, like get tired and then have to like fight. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah. No world shit that they would have to deal with. Yeah. So I had this one guy, he was a little older, probably about 38, 39, you know, not in bad shape, but not in the best shape, but he's in here with a trainer. So the warm up, I made it hard. And he was just like, man, fuck. He said, fuck this. this shit, he's trying to fucking do too much to, with me. Yada, 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 yada. I'm like, bro, what if you have to chase somebody and then fight? Oh, no. You're not going to get there full of gap. You're going to be winded and have to fight. And he like, said, you know, be ready for that? <laughs> yeah. He said, I have weapons. I never seen that guy again. That shit scared me. I'm like, fuck. That guy did not need to be out there. And that's the problem. That's the problem. See, listen. We, I know, I hold police officers in high regard. I yeah. respect. Them, you know what I mean, um, I'm not gonna say, oh, a lot of a lot of friends as cops. I literally do, but fuck all of that. Even if I didn't, I respect them. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And I give them, uh, I give them all the respect. I never, I never insult their intelligence when I'm pulled over. I'm like, my bad, bro. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I don't lie to them. I don't why you pull me over. I don't play those games with them. I respect them. They have somewhat of an authority over us. Yeah. They're superheroes. So they are, they have to be held to a high standard. I agree. You know what I'm saying? Don't, I got a friend, I, one of my buddies, he's a cop and I talk so much shit to him because he got, he became a cop and then got out of shape because it's a heavy drink culture. And yeah. I'm all here in California with the law enforcement. Mm -hmm. I'm like, bro, how are you a cop? Like y'all drink, like all of them, they drink so much. And he got fucking fat, bro. Yeah. So I'm not, like, his like, the surprise was fucked. He was like really unhealthy within yeah. like two years. Ugh. I talked so much shit to him. I'm like, bro, you supposed to be, if I was a cop, I'd be a fucking shit. Y'all would all be scared of me. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. That's how it should be, right? I want to respect our cops. Like, yo, our shit, they're legit. Yeah. But you know how it is when you train, your mind is in a better place. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. You feel more confident. When you enter a situation, you feel confident. You know, it's right. the same, it, it, that's, it's the problem with a lot of things. When people enter and they don't have confidence, yeah. they resort to something else. They resort to fear, they resort to bullying, they resort to a victim mentality, but they go somewhere else when you don't have confidence. Wow. And I think that that's part of it. When that cop pulls you over, he already has, in those bad situations, that diet, guy doesn't have confidence. Because when you have confidence, you can settle something with a conversation. When you're trained properly in how to speak, you can de-escalate anything. I was just talking to Jake that like, I feel like you get anybody in a room with me, anyone in a room with you, you pull them away from their crowd of, you, right. you pull someone out of the KKK and they sit down with you and half an hour later, you guys are gonna be on the same page about everything. Cause you're, as long as you're level headed, it's fine. And I think this that when they enter these situations and you're not trained physically, and then you're not trained with your words, you, yeah, you're, you have to flex something else. So you flex your gun, you, you escalate, you yell faster or whatever comes out. And that's how a lot of it goes bad. Mm -hmm. uh. Yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting, man. And then we have, um, so like I've literally been doing a lot of research. I've been, you know, I was out there with the protests and part of my reason for protesting was, you know, running off motherfuckers that was looting. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's out there. I don't want nobody because it's everybody's looting, but it's not, blacks are not starting that shit. Yeah. It, it's some opportunists hopping in and grabbing TVs and shit. Yeah. But first of all, let's say this. It's funny people make such a big deal about the looting. The looting happened like two days and it was done. It wasn't fucking crazy. Nothing like the LA riots, you know what I'm saying? So, but that was blown out of proportion. My thing on the looting, I don't condone it at all. I speak against it. I'm, out, I'm literally out in the streets. Uh, when I was going out, we was going to run off. We had to run off people in Long Beach. Mm -hmm. They actually broke down my guy's gym. You know what I'm saying? So 
That's that's a no go. But but here's the thing, that shit is a small. It's a small thing. Like it's a huge underlying issue, and that is a small byproduct of a systemic racism of cries of of, of us that's unanswered. That's been unanswered. Bro, I can show you a movie, one of my favorite movies, it's called Do The Right Thing. Uh, it's from the 80s, 30 some years ago. And it's about like racism in New York, like how dynamic it is and how crazy it is. It's a dope movie though, but this same George Floyd incident happens in that movie. You know what I'm saying? Because it's so normal in our community. We see this shit all the time. Black man get into it with a store owner, they go back and have some words. The cops come, choke the black dude out, then the people riot. You know what I'm saying? So I, I, once again, how do you get in it with a store owner? Like that's how far away if I am from. So like I have, it's, 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 the premise of the movie is a pizzeria, right? And they just talking shit to each other, and they get into a fucking argument. And you know, two men. Yeah. Somebody wants to back, come down. You know what I'm saying? They just uh -huh. get escalated more and more and more. And it got out of hand. Police get called. Black dude get choked out. Yeah. The black dude's a big, intimidating looking dude. You know what I'm saying? But that's that's not a reason to get choked out. You know what I mean? So, no, I, so I don't, yeah, that's the same thing. I don't think you should ever enter, enter a situation with the police where someone should die. It just right. doesn't make sense. You know what I mean? Unless. Unless so, you're shooting at the cops and the cops, like that, that has to happen back and forth. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, you get what you deserve, right? Yeah. Uh, I mean, just, I don't feel like there should be a death happening. Nah, but, nah. so yeah, I agreed. I, but I think that a lot of that goes back to like, okay, well, like my question is, and sort of, I've been pushed more into, like, I, I don't care. But the more that I have, because I'm getting a lot of messages right now of, of and once again, it's not, black dudes or black girls that are mad at me it's white people that are like you're not doing enough you ha you should have white guilt you should have white privilege so like i'm just trying to sit back and watch and then like figure out what's going on for my own opinions let me say this on your behalf yeah i appreciate you sitting back because what you're doing is intelligent it is really disheartening i'm seeing people just diarrhea and bullshit out of their mouth when they don't know what they're talking about, right? Here's the thing, like ask me what this means or what that means or, or if you would have been like, yo bro, why y'all so mad? Why are black people so mad? Yeah. I would not be mad that you asked me that. I would, just, <laughs> I would explain why, I get it. You don't yeah. know, you don't have the same experience. And then people will look at me like a representative of, of black people. I'm, I'm, I'm fairly successful. I've done well for myself. But I come from nothing, so I've dealt with all the racist shit. I've been beat up by the cops for yeah. nothing, for being out past curfew and fucking when I was in college, dumb shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, I've been. What do you I've mean? Been, uh, so hold up, hold up. I just want to pull that one thing. What do you mean beat up by the cops? So in Arizona, uh, in Tempe specifically, it's a college town, so the motherfuckers are wild. Yeah. White people are fucking crazy, bro. Oh yeah, college town white people are crazy. Yeah, I've never experienced that till then. Oh, I was that's like, chaos. I was like, yo, <laughs> so right. party nonstop. But anyway, it was, I don't know what was going on, but we had a curfew, um, for whatever reason. Maybe it was just a city. I don't know. It's a small town, and we was all out. It was the club just left that out, and we leaving. You know, mm -hmm. um, with a curfew, you have to give people a buffer to get out of there. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So. The cops were, you know, fucking with us, whatever, selling us curfew shit. And, um, you know, I'm just like, yeah, okay, whatever. You know, I'm, I'm young. I'm like 21. Mm -hmm. Just listening halfway. And he's like yelling at me. And I just didn't like that shit. And he fucking grabbed me to pull me over here. He kept telling me to stand over here. And I'm like, what's the difference between standing here and there? Like, yeah. get over here. This is some ego shit. Get over yeah. here. He pulls me over and I yank away from him. Bro, you ever see like in a cartoon <laughs> when some shit happened and everybody's jumping and it's a big fucking ruckus? Yeah. I felt like that's what it looked like. They fucking all jumped on me. Yeah. You know what I'm Fuck me up, hand, have me handcuffed, I'm on the floor. And the the one that we had words, he like, he looked down, I'm on the floor on my, my stomach. He like, you like to punch people? Uh, uh, you like to pull? 
What did he say? I, I yanked away from him. Whatever he said, he said something, something motherfucker, and he kept hitting me on the side of the face. My face was swollen to hear. Oh, right? Jesus. Yeah. But I'm, when you're young, like, you like with the shits. And I was like thinking, like, he can't even knock me out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. the whole time. And uh, they took me to jail and let me out a few hours later. No, no charges pressed because of what they did to me. I don't, I don't even have the wherewithal to try to like file charges against them and yeah. jail. You know what I'm saying? Like, fuck it. We laughed about it because, you know, it was young and stupid. But yeah, little silly shit like that. That, ain't, that didn't happen to white groups. Not in Arizona, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But because they probably fear their parents, what their parents would say, and this, that, and the third, whatever. But nonetheless, you know, I've been called nigga multiple times out there. You know what I'm yeah. saying? All kind of shit. And that shit don't even bother me. Like, yeah. if you say it and you close enough to me, I might beat your ass because I'm supposed to do that, but I'm not yeah. angry. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I think that shit is silly, you know? But nonetheless, Racism is a real thing. I know people who uh, had drugs planted, like people that I know, I know their character, you know what I'm saying? Had drugs planted. I, you know, it, it's a whole, it's a very complex and dynamic situation, the issue of systemic racism. Cause it's not just police brutality. It's a lot bro, it's a lot. And no, we're not going here. So thank you. So, uh, but here's the thing, it's been in place for so many years. Let me explain. Um, I had a conversation with one of my white homies who was like, bro, like slavery is so long ago. Like everybody's, you made it, like why? Like, I'm like, bro, slavery was not long ago, right? So when slavery was outlawed, we were still slave. They just changed the name to sharecroppers and mm -hmm. indentured servants, right? Let me get on that in a minute, but they also, let me address this part. They also implemented new laws called Black Code and then Jim Crow. And what these laws were, were any little goofy thing a black man does, it was only for black people, that's what's called Black Code. Mm -hmm. You get arrested, you get beat, arrested, and then you have to work for free. So back to slavery, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's why the justice system is, is really, when you understand it, it's designed for us to keep losing. You know what I'm saying? Yep. So, I mean, it's the reason that we're only 15% of the population of the country, but we're 40% inmates in jail. So do it's you think that- we're bad people. Do you think that has anything to do with like, cause something clicked the other day. Cause once again, I'm sitting back watching. Right. And something that I realized the other day, cause like you scroll through Instagrams, you see memes, right? So I heard uh, the song, Fuck the Police, right? Mm -hmm. So like when I was younger, driving around with my dad in the car, never once did he ever play any music, anything like that, that was like, fuck the police or anything like that. It was all about like, you know, the 60s. So it was about like different words for drugs and like, I'm on this fucking train, which really meant coke or whatever. So I didn't even understand. I'm just like sitting there. And then at all cost, I was taught, listen, like I knew to be scared of the police. So like that, that video of that kid hiding behind the Jeep, I did the same thing. I, I, I always hid from the police because I just felt like maybe I threw a rock earlier. I don't fucking know. I'm just going to fucking hide. Like cops and robbers, I'm just going to hide from this dude. And then in addition to that, whenever I did, like I've been arrested a few times. I've been in cop cars a few times. But it was always like the second that I came in contact with the police, it was like you were – nothing it was like cool where do you want me to put my hands i'm sorry and i and i was raised to just like there is no like even when you said pull your arm away no i do not do that this motherfucker's in control in front of me so like culturally i was brought up that i never heard fuck the police or anything in music or anything in my culture that they were the enemy i still knew to hide from them because you know i was fucking doing weird shit as a kid and just always you know and then on top of that i was trained to respect all authority and like looking back now, dude, I respected and I listened to people that I should not have listened to. But it was like, if you were an adult, if you were in, if I was in a store, you don't argue with store owners, you don't argue with adults, you don't argue. And I was raised with all that hard. So part of me wonders that like, you know, uh, a black kid growing up now, like his dad's listening to songs, fuck Trump, fuck, uh, like half the songs are fucked, like fuck the president, like. 
uh, fuck the police, fuck this. And it's like, I don't, that's starting at a very young age. So part of me wonders like, once again, it's not the whole problem, but that has to play into it. Okay, let me, let me, let me articulate on that. Yeah. That's a good point. All right, so we do have the freedom of expression, right? Yeah. Okay. First of all, black people's relationship with the police is not pleasant. No. We comply and we still get well, bad things happen to us. Yeah. Um, there was an instance a couple years ago when a guy, he was a group, he worked uh, a group home with mentally disabled uh, people and they were, he was out trying to catch one of the boys who just ran off and the cops had him lay down and he's laying down. The boy, the disabled, mentally disabled boy was kind of like up and moving around or whatever. And they shot the guy, you know what I'm saying? He was compliant. I we remember get, that. We get shot when we comply. So it I remember matter. that, yeah. It doesn't matter. Um, furthermore, music, I don't know why people take rap music specifically and make that like as if that's like a, it's in a, a higher regard than like John Wick or The Godfather. You know what I'm saying? These movies yeah. are wildly violent, yeah, yeah. And highly entertaining, uh, highly uh, exalted. Like The Godfather, that's my shit. Like straight yeah. up, John Wick as well. The Godfather, they killed a bunch of they. You see them killing cops and yeah. you know, uh, the government, whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah. So to me, it's just like because Sean and I had a conversation the other day. He was like. Should the music be kind of like, I'm like, no, freedom of expression is just music. It's yeah, just, I, I, and, and listen, why are we saying fuck the police? If shit was cool, we wouldn't be reacting like that to the police. You know what I'm, see what I'm saying? It's a reason yeah. for that shit. It's not like they're nice to us and they protect and serve us too. You uh -huh. feel me? Yeah. I don't, I don't want to, I don't say that. That shit's stupid. Like, it, I don't agree with that. I say fuck bad police and fuck police who watch the bad police do bad shit. You yeah. know what I'm saying? You're bad too, because yeah. I wouldn't. You're not doing no bad shit in front of me. You know what I'm so saying? At the, at the same point in time, I'm talking to you. You know, right. like you have a greater understanding. You're constantly chasing a greater understanding. Right. And I think that so am I. So I'm, I'm exceptional and you're exceptional in that regard. But I think the average person's not that exceptional. We can but agree I on that. Myself in their shoes. So can I. And just being angry. I understand that. It's a very simple emotion that comes on so easy. And embracing anger is so easy. And I'm not trying to, I don't want to say that I'm summing up rap music as bad. And, right. I'm, and then I'm, I'm ignoring th things like that. I'm just strictly taking like, I know my childhood growing up, even right. if I rode with other dads, not just my dad, but when you're, there was never music like that that spoke. And I'm not saying that's 100% of the issue, but I'm saying there's so many little puzzle pieces like that. And I think one of my biggest issues right now is that I see from all parties is just accountability. So yeah. it's like, yeah, I don't, I'm not blaming it on the rap music. And, but putting out a song that says, fuck the police to like rile people up. Let me, let me, that let takes me. a little bit of accountability. Let me expand on that more. Okay. All right. Some would say that because some people try to counter the whole George Floyd thing or police killing black men by saying, well, blacks kill more blacks than police. 100%. But so does white kill more whites than police as well or whomever. Yeah. So I went and looked, did, went on the FBI website to get the data, the, the numbers on, because uh, in my head, I'm like, well, I'm sure whatever said race kills their own race more because they live amongst each other. Yeah. And I looked it up for blacks and whites, and it's exactly what I thought. But there's people bringing up the, well, blacks kill blacks, you know, 90% of the time mm -hmm. to counter the, the issue. But I pull it up, and the whites do the same thing. And that's not a that's just a normal thing in society because we, you know, everybody have guns and we live amongst typically our own people, our yeah. own fellow race. So, you know, now let me get back to like, let's say, okay, let's say that that wasn't the case and blacks are just violent, right? What did we learn it from? On the plantations, 
we were disciplined with violence, with extreme violence. You know what I mean? The worst type of violence. Okay. okay. We were tortured, genitalia, fucking dismembered, cut off, shoved in our mouths. You know, we were lynched. It was postcards made. You ever heard of lynched postcards? No. It would be the picture of the, a man hanging. Oh, and, so, yeah, I didn't know those were actual postcards. What? Yeah, yeah, postcards. It's sending a message, bro. And you see kids, you know, mom and little little daughter looking up. It was a it was a public event when we would get lynched. You know what I'm saying? So you, our whole legacy, the United States legacy, is, is is based on violence. You know what I'm saying? Uh, conquering, you know, and violence is celebrated. We learned it legitimately. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. We didn't teach ourselves this. We were taught this. I never beat my kids or. or physically discipline my kids because I never wanted to teach them you, that you resolve comp. One, the first reason was I didn't want to carry on that tradition of slavery because that's where we got it from. Okay. So, but also I don't want to teach them. I never wanted to teach them that you resolve conflict with violence because that's yeah. literally what that is. Beating, exactly. beating your kids is because they did something and it made you mad. So now you're beating them. You're yeah. mad. You shouldn't do that. But we got beat. Grown adults got beat. You know what I'm saying? Whipped, violent, like really bad shit. Yeah. So we learned this shit legit. You know what I'm saying? And then, all right, y'all free, go, do whatever. Well, now, I mean, my question to that is, like, so you're just saying, and once again, I'm just asking questions because, like, yeah, no, yeah no, fucking, no. I want answers, man. No, so, like, I, my response to that would be, like, okay, so you just stopped the cycle just there with your kids, right? I like, regardless of what happened to you, but, like, I boom, did. cycle stopped with you, okay. with your specific kids. Okay, Rob. You're a multimillionaire. You're yeah. fucking crushing it, right? Right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So you chose not to go and work at somebody's fucking nine to five. You, you chose, you found a, 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 a lane, you went into it and you maximized it and you did well for yourself. And you yes. quit a lot of people, right? Yes. Why isn't everybody else, other guys like you doing that? Because they don't have it. You're an outlier. Yeah. And, Okay, so am I. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. a lot of people don't even, you gotta think, bro, a lot of people don't even have the bandwidth to think about why am I beating my kids? They're just frustrated. They're working okay. in a nine to five. They're, you know what I'm saying? Like life is hard. For okay, most yeah, I see what you're saying. Most people go a thousand dollars, a lot of fucking money. Like, no, I agree. But a lot of people. I mean, I was, I was there eight years ago you know what i mean like it's been really good eight years but like and i mean same same thing with you but so like i remember that yeah but i think i think that's the thing man a lot of people don't and, and each generation we get further away from it yeah but you gotta understand my great grandparents were sharecroppers yeah that's a legal way of saying slaves uh-huh. my great grandparents so my grandparents parents yeah you know so and and did you did you know them? Because like I I barely knew my great grandparents. Yeah. So like on both that's sides. Mother that's very very close to you, right? Oh, so right. I guess my my question now is because right now I'm just witnessing anger. I'm witnessing everyone's outraged. Everyone wants everyone to feel this certain way, but no one's sort of saying like. So how how do we get to what where you just said no fucking hard stop with my kids? You know, where does that start? Because that's what we were talking about as far as, like, does that start in communities? Does that start – once again, there's so many facets. There's the police. There's the government. There's – I wasn't even aware of these gang fucking uh, incarceration things. There's so many different things. But, like, I understand it starts with awareness, right? Right. Which I get that – that's what this is right now. This is awareness. We need, we need healing, right? Yeah. Our country needs healing. Okay. Right? You see that there is racism. You may not know the the levels of it, but you can see. You're a white guy, but you still yeah. know that. No, I, I'm I'm aware that there's that there's okay. shit going on. Yeah. Right, right. I'm. But, I would right. never deny that there was racism. Right. Yeah. But some people deny it, mm-hmm. and that's cool. what we need. Is this? We need like. It's, it. I I can say it shouldn't take, Ahmaud Arbery and then George Floyd and the other girl for people to start opening their eyes to, to a lot of shit, but mm-hmm. for, for people to start, like white people and people in power to start making a stance, but I'm glad they're doing it. I don't care, as long as it's happening. Yeah. Like, let's say, for instance, 
Some people are make are uh, fucking losing their panties about Confederate statues coming down, right? Yeah. These generals. Yeah. These people, people got to realize the Civil War was the South trying to keep slavery, trying yeah. to keep human beings uh, working for free under really fucked up uh, uh, circumstances because it was good for the economy, mm-hmm. right? So they lost. lost. The Confederate lost. That was the enemy to the United States. If yep. you're a real patriot, you should be like, take those fucking statues down. Those guys lost. And yep. those guys are not good people. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's one thing, right? That's a that's a that's a olive branch. That's like, yo, we recognize. Like yeah. this shit, that shit is not cool. Take that shit down. Right? There's people pissed that those shit, statues are coming down. Yeah. There's a guy I watch, this is a guy that I know, and I'm just I didn't say nothing to him, but he's on Twitter. Lady Antebellum, right? So it's a group from Tennessee, okay. a, a, a country Western uh, group. They decided to change their name to Lady A because Antebellum is a style of uh, architecture in the South. Mm-hmm. But Antebellum was like slave days because that, that style of architecture was uh, unique to plantations with slaves. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So they said, they did a statement the other day, like, you know what? we. We hope that we recognize the pain in our name, yada, yada, yada. Like, most people don't know that because most people ain't in the South or Black or whatever or know that history, but it's a very racist thing. But they, they said, you know, we're going to drop that with Lady A until further enough so we figure something else out. They said they, they had a really positive, nice message. You know how many people, and one of the guys that I know, he don't even listen to that kind of music, right? He's pissed, like, well, fuck this shit. Don't fucking change your name. I'm like, bro, they're changing their name because that name represented a period of slavery, right? Yeah. Why are you mad about that? You know what I'm saying? I think- It's not his group, it's their group. I think the problem is on a larger scale, there's groups, right? Mm -hmm. So everyone, I feel like even me, I'm being through my DMs and comments and shit, it's like, People are like, what's your side? What side are you on? You know, if you're, I get this a lot too. If you're white, you're not, you're not speaking up. You're part of the fucking problem. Right. Motherfucker, I am not, part, <laughs> I am not part of the problem because I'm not speaking up. I'm trying to sit back, pay attention, figure out where I can help, not just yell on the streets. So I think what, what, and I feel it too a little bit, to be completely honest. I feel myself being like, oh yeah, I'm Republican, motherfucker. And like, I was pulling away from the Republican party hard. Because I don't agree with fucking at least half of what they have going on. I agree with half Democrats. I agree with half Republicans. But the more I get yelled at that I'm bad and then all of a sudden it's like when, when it comes time to pick a party, I'm pushed towards this party. And then when something like the statues comes down, like maybe that guy, I'm sure if he sat down and you actually talked to him, he would realize like he don't fucking care. Like, he doesn't care, but I feel like because everyone's forced right now to pick a side, people are ending up believing in shit that they don't believe in. That if you pick a certain topic and we said, hey, man, what do you think about these statues coming down? These are the statues that you explained and what they did. Like, that dude would probably take it different, but he's, I feel like everyone's being forced to take, pick a side. And even the signs, like, so we had small protests here, and that's what all the signs, like, 50% 50% of the signs were Black Lives Matter. 50% of the signs were like, if you're white and you're not here, you're the problem. You know, and I'm reading that and I'm like, you know, you, you, you get your initial reaction is you get defensive and you go back to your side, which is not what we should be doing right now. Like we should be saying like, no, let's address these fucking statues. Let's actually have a conversation. And I think if we had a conversation, it'd be good. But when when someone like that sees people just randomly pulling down statues and just acting like maniacs, it's very easy to be like, they're maniacs. But it's like, that's the biggest problem that I see right now with me sitting back is there's not just conversation between rational human beings to say like, yeah, man, why are we celebrating Confederate generals? What? There, there, all right, so there's conversations being happening. It's just not, we don't see that. That's not exciting. Exactly. You yeah. see statues falling down and shit yeah. like that. Um, I, bro, like there's a lot that I'm, I'm at a point to where I'm going to be making donations to organizations that's making shit happen. And yeah. I'm also going to be collaborating with them to make sure the right shit is, is happening like and using my platform. 
Like I'm in here talking to heavy hitters, powerful people. I'm talking to the LAPD. I'm talking to, I'm going to be doing shit to make shit happen. You don't see that kind of shit. You won't. You know what I'm saying? No, no that so, won't be covered. It's okay. Here's the thing, bro. Like my father always told me this. He said, like, you develop character in hard times when you're mm -hmm. under attack. Get yeah. calm. Man. So that's what this is. I get it. I'm getting it too, bro. I'm losing consistent 500 to 1,000 people a day on Instagram every yeah. day. I'm like, good riddance. I, yeah. I really, I mean it in my heart. If you're angry that I'm fighting for justice, I don't want you to be here. Yeah. You know I, mean? I mean it. I really mean it. You know what I mean? So um, when it comes to like picking a side, that's not even, to me, that's not the energy, bro, because this is where I'm at with it. I'm a registered independent, right? Yes. I don't fit into none of these boxes. I don't trust, I I dive into research on all, all kinds of shit. The Republicans and Democrats, I know why they are where they're at right now. Yeah. Ideology, by, mm -hmm. ideological wise, I know that these motherfuckers don't give a shit about us. No. None of them, right? No. All of it, they're in the best interest of their biggest lobbies who's putting money in their pocket. Yep. And they make a ton of money from that shit, right? So it has nothing to do with us. Their job is to keep us divided, Republican, Democrat, and fire up the bases, you know what I'm saying? And they use very specific strategy on both sides. Nancy Pelosi, with the, when her and the other Democrat dudes took the knee with the African fucking... That was just one of the silliest like, things I've ever seen in my life, yeah. Bro, I'm like, yeah, I see this bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> no, and that's the thing. Rational wow. rational people see through that. Rational right. people are like, They're, that's not... What's going? Wow. Stop. Bro, the rational people not seeing it on the Republican side, though. The, listen, Trump. Who believes that Trump gives a fuck about the Bible? No, no one. Rational you know people realize that he's never opened a Bible. It's, but but then you take it a step further. I mean, Trump, like, and I'm not saying this out of hyperbole. And I'm not saying, look, I'm not gonna say Trump's a racist, but part of the strategy when Nixon took office for the Republican party was to grab two groups that nobody had. The racists in the South and the uh, Angelical, evangelicals and the Catholics in the Northeast. Mm -hmm. So they hopped on racist type shit and immigration and all that kind of shit. Keep in mind, there's all, always nuance in between all that and also abortion for the religious people. Yeah. That can secure a bunch of voters. Trump, he's not a politician, right? He's a guy. He's, yeah. I respect his gangster, to be honest, but he's so obviously going pandering to yeah. the racist and the religion part is like, bro, you're not even doing it good. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I think that that is a horrible message to project when the president should be trying to unify this country, not keep it divided. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Bro, he says he, he, last week, he praised the National Guard for how easily they got peaceful protesters from in front of that area of the White House for him to get to that church for that photo op. And he said, I want to thank the, uh, I want to thank Baltimore police or whatever police, National Guard and the SS, Secret Service. Yeah. But the SS was Hitler's private security, his bodyguards, you know, yeah. the light it's like, wow, yeah, I know, I know, I know SS. Um, and then the picture that he took with the Bible was like, like the Hitler picture with him holding the Bible real awkward. Now, like, now do you, by the side. let's do you say, think, let's say, well, go ahead. Do you like, so I get that. I, I saw that whole thing go down. I saw the SS. I, I didn't think so. Do, do you really think, like, I saw the Hitler side by side photo. Do, do you really think he was like, Really? You think that he was like, all right, I'm going to go mimic this Hitler photo? I do. You think so? Because, all right, so have you heard the term dog whistle? I, I, I don't know the term, no. Okay, so dog whistle is, it's a tag, it's a... Oh, it makes sense now. I just thought about it and it makes sense. Yeah. For a long time. Yeah. 
Like, I'll give you an, an example. Ronald Reagan, you know, when they were just cracking down, like, the war on drugs, all of this shit. It's really a war on blacks or people. Yeah. Like so you, you blow a whistle that only a frequency of people that you want to hear here, right? You give yourself an out. So you say something racist, like, you know, something about these, what do you say, these welfare queens, you know? Most, it was a bunch of black people on welfare that, first yeah. of all, it is what it is. There's way more white people on welfare than black people. But yeah. it was focused on the black people. And it seemed like it's just black, that's a black people thing. So that was a black thing. So you can say, yo, that was racist. He said, I didn't say black people. You know what I'm saying? Hitler the same, I mean, uh, uh, Trump the same thing with the SS thing. Oh, what? I didn't say stoops, so whatever they call Yeah. That means the Secret Service. Giving yourself an out, but you know what you're doing. You're, it's cold, right? And it's it's very unnecessary what it is, especially in a time like what we're in. Yeah. A very volatile time. Look, he's having his, uh, his big fucking rally in Tulsa. Are you familiar with Black people's history with Tulsa? Uh, is is that where the um? Black, no, no. We the, had a it, the most prominent Black uh, 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 community at the time. They named it Black Wall Street, and um, is in Tulsa. They were, and it had to be like that because it was inter people were, you couldn't integrate into other communities. So yeah, but this happened to be the model for Black communities across the, the nation, but yeah, you know, you just got to see it because um, a kid was in an elevator. There was, okay, so at the time they had all uh, these laws called Black Code and Jim Crow, right? There's a bunch of ridiculous laws for black men. Like for instance, you, a black man cannot raise his hand and shake a white, man hand, white man's hand, because okay. that would symbolize that they're equal. Yeah. A black man cannot, uh, try to light a white woman's cigarette okay. because he might rape her. These are literally the laws, bro. Yeah. So a, a guy, a young guy was in an elevator, black guy. He was a shoe shiner in the elevator. Something happened to where he bumped into the elevator operator, who was a white girl. She screamed or made some kind of noise. People were like, what, what's, what's happening? He gets arrested. Um, black soldiers from well, guys that fought in World War One, they're black, bro. They came because we was getting lynched left and right. Mm -hmm. So they came armed to the courthouse to make sure that that guy was all right and got treated fair, right? Whites heard about it and they came with guns. Ruckus uh, uh, happened. Shots fired. People dispersed. The whites went through and decimated that that black wall street got taken out of there so like five thousand people ended up homeless blacks 300 died 1500 injured it was the biggest massacre in american history it's called black that. wall street. yeah i'm gonna write that down and look it up later because that sounds like something so, i should know about okay so remember that tulsa right another thing another date that's significant to black people June 19th. We call it Juneteenth. In every community, in every black community, Juneteenth is a, ho a black holiday. And it was like celebrating the date that slavery was abolished. Mm -hmm. so, so Hitler, I mean, Trump's <laughs> uh, rally is on June 19th in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. It's like, bro, why, why are you doing that? It's, just, it's more like, he is, it's too many of these things for it not to be deliberate. You know yeah. what I'm saying? He's not stupid. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And he's a very petty, he's petty, bro. Like, he's petty, you know, yeah. You know, and I'm not mad at petty, but not when it's at the expense of a bunch of people, and especially people who, you know, we, yo, bro, like, ease off of us. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, it, 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 as a black man, it hurts, bro. Mm -hmm. That's, it's, it doesn't mean anything in a big scheme of things. It don't affect me physically, but it hurts because it's like, yeah. oh, you're our president. You're our president too. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Why be so insensitive? You know what I'm saying? So it just it just really sucks. And like once again, it's cold. It's like it's not overt, you yeah. know what I'm saying? But it's there and it's too consistent, bro, for it to be a bunch of coincidences. Yeah. It's an actual strategy. You know what I mean? And it's keeping 
look, he's losing rational people. You know what I'm saying? So he got to keep those guys fired up, those racist yeah. guys. Whether Trump's a racist or not, I don't know. I didn't think he was because he's a New York City billionaire. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like You can't, yeah, he's... But his actions are showing otherwise. And if you're pretending to be long enough, maybe you are. I don't know. It's yeah. such a silly thing. But, you know, he is almost 80 years old and the shit was alive and thriving in his day. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, Interesting. You know, yeah. So, so... I get it, you know. I like the. Uh, I like hearing all those things add up. I don't like hearing all those things add up, but like, I'm a little bit of a fan of conspiracy theories, because, yeah. and not that that's a conspiracy. Theory. Those are obviously like just a bunch wow. of things that align that aren't right. But like, I th- I'm I'm a bigger fan of like looking at some because I know that like and same thing when you release a product, you're not just like here's a product. Like no, right. there's a bunch of shit that goes behind that, and like, wow. there's like. When I saw you go to bags on your protein, it's like, okay, no, you, there's a story, there's a buildup, there's an angle, there's, and with everything that comes out, like, and we're small, t- we're selling fucking protein and t-shirts right. and we're still putting tons of time into our marketing. And it's just right. what, two people here, two people there. Right. And to think that the government doesn't sit around with a hundred thousand people with right. way more resources than we have to put together narratives. Right. If you don't think that, then you're then you're stupid. You know what I mean? And, and, and think about this, Rob. You know, you see how easily influenced people are. So easily, yeah. People are telling me. People are telling me, Black Lives Matter is a they, the organization. They're putting all their money to the Democratic Party. They're donating tons of money over there. And Joe Biden was for segregation. And George Soros is funding uh-huh. uh, uh, Black Lives Matter. So I, and I was like saying, I don't give a fuck about Black Lives Matter, the organization. Yeah. I give a fuck about Black Lives Matter. That's what I'm saying, right? So, so the problem is, the problem is, once again, we're going back to like, you're a smart dude. Mm-hmm. The average person that doesn't even know the argument that you just said, and they're just donating to Black Lives Matter, which is then oh. going to, right? Oh, hold on, hold on. Okay. That's not even, all right. I understand it's a dumb uh, argument, but. No, no, no. Yeah. Look, look, listen. So we researched it because we were, at the time, we were researching other like ACLU and other organizations to see yeah. about that shit because you can request financials and get them and all of that shit. So let's, for the fuck of it, let me not shit on Black Lives Matter, the organization. Let me do my research. Bro, they're on the up and up for one, right? Um, if they are donating to the Democratic Party, it makes sense because the Democratic Party tends to deal with issues that Black Lives Matter think are, are important. Duh, no, no shit, right? Mm-hmm. Um, George Soros, oh, oh, and then how much they're donating to uh, these political organizations. One person cannot donate more than $2,800 by law and mm-hmm. they uphold that. A lot of uh, organizations use other companies that handle the financials because that's what they do. Like, if I try to do, we probably fuck up somehow. So you hire another corp- a company that do that, and a company that they use is called Blue Something. And people was probably did a little bit of research and seen that name. Say Act Blue. Act Blue. Uh, Act Blue. Yeah. Act Blue. Yeah. And they they don't give a fuck about. Republican, Democrat, they're just a utility that you use. So it's like using a, a fulfillment company. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They know how to do the shit properly. Yeah. Okay, you about to say something? No, I was, I was going to say the research that I saw on Act Blue was the overwhelming amount that it was just donated to the Democratic side. The Democrat oh. side. Why is that bad, though? No, I'm not, saying, I'm, not, I'm not saying that's, yeah. I'm not saying that's yeah. bad. It's just... It's yeah. just to see money, to, to see money, simple-minded people, like my mom, for example. My mom would just be like, yes, I want to donate to this cause. But then to have her, her money be funneled a little bit and then not go to causes that directly affect communities, but then just go sort of get washed out in, the, uh, in this political game, right, right, that's, right. that's the part that, like, bums me out. So, so this is my perspective on money going to political parties. I know that somebody has to go there, right? Because we need, 
I don't fucking trust a politician. None of them. Yeah. But we need people to to get policy passed that's in the best interest for what we feel is important, right? Mm -hmm. We can't do it on the street. That's in politics. That's politicians. So, like, by, let's say Biden was for segregation, right? I don't give a fuck. I just, if I'm going to give you money, I'm going to stand right next to you. All right, let's go. Go sign that paperwork. Do the shit that I need done. I'm not yeah. romantic with these people. I don't, I don't care what they feel in their heart. What I care about is get this shit done, the right thing, right? That's why, you know, I'm going to make sizable donations, but we're going to be in collaboration. It's not like, oh, here's some money. Uh, so I think that's that's my concern with the political parties right now is and it, that's it's not working it isn't has, hasn't worked in the past. But, but here's the thing though. Here's the thing. I'm not doing anything on a, a, a federal level. I'm exactly. only doing local shit. Exactly, yeah. and I think that's where it all goes back to is like yeah. it's the local shit. That's all I'm dealing with. Yeah, that's, I think that's, that's if we had to if we had to figure out the root of everything and like where the most action can be taken, it is the local shit. You know, Bro, it doesn't matter who's the president. It don't no. affect. No president has ever affected me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But this shit affects me here, right? So that's where all my attention and energy is going, and I'm gonna do what I can to educate people on that fact. Like, fuck these guys over here. Those are just baller ass fucking businessmen, and they fucking crushing shit. They don't give a fuck about us. Bro, no president really intervenes with anything state. They might say shit. They're not getting involved with nothing in the state. You know what I'm saying? They can make recommendations. They're not, they can't. You know what I'm saying? So this shit is fucking crazy how it's broken down. So I'm not dealing with that at all. I'm dealing with, with local yep. local things in the community that I can have a, a, my hand involved with. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. More actionable things. You know what I'm saying? And it's not all for, and, and keep in mind, bro, this is a, a thing that people don't realize. Um, Cause we requested financials. When we see on the shit, you, nobody, donates more through those organizations more than twenty eight hundred dollars so you know it's it's not even that big of a thing you know what i mean people that donate big money to like biden or trump they do it directly to them you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. all of those guys you can donate through their websites and shit you know what i'm saying yeah. and uh all kind of extravagant ways to really get money to them yeah i don't have i'd be interested uh, you pay fifty thousand dollars for a fucking seat at their banquets it's all kind of goofy yeah, yeah. shit yeah. I know people that have done it with Trump. And I'm like, well, what did he do for you? Yeah. They, I was well, I was at I was at one of those fundraisers, one of those oh, really, Trump really? one of those uh where the shit the chairs cost ten grand or whatever. Yeah. Right, 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 right. I didn't pay ten grand. We were bought brought there as like it was way before he was a president. Oh okay. It was with like the New York Yankees. Um, okay. so yeah, it was you know, different time, obviously. Right, right, right. But I was at one of those and watching it work was like this is because was, there was a silent auction happening. Yeah. And uh, you would bid on shit, right? So, like, you would bid on golf lessons with this top golf guy. And the lessons are valued at $10,000. Yeah. So, I'm sitting there thinking, like, I had a little bit of money at the time. I was like, I'm going to bid on some of this shit just because I want to be part of a, an auction. Right, and right, then right. that's all donated. But the, everyone in the room, what I didn't realize is everyone wanted to show how big their dick was. Right. So, shit that was worth ten grand, people were like, 20. But wait. Right. I can literally buy it for ten grand, but they just want to flex in front of everyone, and then the money goes to who? But yeah, I was it. That was a was, weird world. I was at one of those too, and it was very weird. It was weird a, world, NFL, man. NFL thing, and I was thinking like, yo, where did the money go to? Like, who gets that shit? And yeah, I don't even know. I don't remember, but a lot of money moved around. Uh, and fast too. Very fast. Fair about this is my thing. My takeaway, like, I don't know how to fix things. Right? I don't. It's too many things that needs to be addressed. I hope that people in leadership do the right thing to fix things, right? But this is what I know for certain. People got to stop allowing politics and the media to keep us divided. This sounds corny, but the power is literally in the people. Yeah. If the people wanted to tear shit up because the government is not acting right, the people can 100% tear shit up. You know what I'm yeah. saying? It advances their guns and shit because a lot of soldiers are people like us too. Well, that's the foundation of America, right? Exactly. It, it's it's when the people get sick of shit, they can change it. And I think that Jake and I had a long conversation earlier of this, and it all just came back down to like where I sit with it is it, it needs to go back to 
we need people like you being like, I'm going to stop this specific thing right now. And like, right. even for me, one thing that, you know, one thing that I, this whole thing's made me reflect on like, what am I guilty of? Right. And I'm guilty of, uh, allowing people around me to make little jokes, right. you know? So like, uh, the, the other day I was like, oh, oh yeah, cool. That he's acting pretty black. And like, right. I don't stop that. You know, I would just be like, yeah, you know, whatever. Fuck it. Like I didn't say it. it's not my deal or right. whatever, but I think the little things that I can do is one, try to work on my community a little bit Two, right. I'm going to su- shut those things down. Right. I'm going to say like, stop. Cause I understand I'm un- influential. I understand that like when I'm standing in circles, what my power is. So yeah. I don't give a fuck if it's, uh, if it's Jewish jokes, if it's whatever, but no, I'm going to, nope, we're going to stop that right now. Especially when okay. you're around me, we're not going to do that. Here's the thing, bro. Here's a nuance to that. If me and you together and you feel like telling a black joke, fucking tell it. Because we should, I want that. I understand that. I, that shit, this is how we get past all of this weird shit. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And it's okay. Like, we we love each other. We we care about each other. We're brothers. We should be able to fucking pick on each other. Yeah. Whatever. You know what I'm saying? So this country is nowhere near that collectively. But these little relationships matter. And, but people like you, you're a, a, a strong, influential person. You're a leader. So, yeah, you doing the right thing in those little micro situations will put people around you on notice like, yeah, that shit ain't cool. I feel stupid now. I don't know why I said that shit. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Because that's, that's happened matter. to me. I've, I've said things, not necessarily race things, but whatever. I've said things where I get like corrected by somebody I look up to. Right. And for the rest of your life, you're like, damn, yeah. why did I? <laughs> and that shit sticks with you forever. Oh, so like, I realize that power of that little comment that you can say to somebody. Um, yeah, man. Here's the thing. And people got to realize, like, look, like one thing I'm not, I don't do is I don't let people's political affiliations. I don't care. Yeah. It doesn't offend me. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, but I just, I feel like, like, say for instance, you in this situation now, people are talking shit and you feel that pressure to play. Like, now I'm fucking Republican. You know, you're smarter than that, bro. And I have faith. I'm not, I can't tell you how to act or what to say, mm-hmm. but you're, I know you and I know that you're smart enough to when you figure out what to say, if you want to say something or not, you want to know how to do it at the yeah. right time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And the smart thing is to kick back and not just jump out the window. Bro, I had somebody <laughs> tell me, Ugh. A person that I thought was my friend, she posted some All Lives Matter. I was like, I just smiled under it, right? And then immediately got defensive with me, like, you one of those people that just want to be right all the time and you don't even know, it's not even what you think it is. And the media is trying to make you think racism is a race war and racism this and yeah. Soros and name those conspiracy shit. And I'm like, calm down. I didn't say, I just smiled, right? Calm down. And I said, but don't stop telling me there's no racism. Like, you know what I mean? And she's like, uh, she sent me a video of a black dude kind of like saying racism ain't what y'all think and he's breaking out of these situations, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm like, I know this guy, I saw this video. This guy, and it's okay, this guy is a minority in the black community because mm-hmm. he's not, his world is not black. You know what I'm saying? And He's still my brother though. You know what I'm saying? He don't understand the experience of most blacks. You know what I mean? But I couldn't even communicate that to this person. She's not black or white, but she's vehement about like, there's no black lives matter. Everything's fine. Yeah. I'm like, how can you, why would you say that? You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like it's not. And she's like getting like trying to offend me. Like I'm educated and you're not. And I said, you saying you educated, but you sent me a dude's video on IG. You didn't cite some fucking. I was doing meme research. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> lo and behold, this guy posts a few days later, like, you know what? I think I was out of line for that. Yeah. I don't have the same experience most blacks have. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the shit. And his video went viral because a lot of white people who don't want wants to suppress this mm-hmm. because I'm not saying that they're back or they want to suppress it, but nobody likes to be pointed out like or called out on things that 
reflect them or maybe their past, whatever yeah. people. Yeah. So, but they were like sharing the fuck out of it because she's not the only person that sent me that. So they'll yeah. take this black dude and keep sharing his shit. Like, see, yeah. black, he's black and he said there's no racism. So he recanted what he said the other day. Me and him talked about it. You know what I'm saying? And I respect, I told I said, I respect that, bro. I said, I wanted to talk to you about that video, but I just wanted to sit back for a minute and just really take it in. Because I, you know, I learned to like not just react to things anymore. You know what I'm saying? Because there's nuance to everything, right? Mm -hmm. And everybody got their reason for saying whatever they say. So let's, let me sit back and just really feel it out. Yeah. And I want me to feel like he, he figured out himself, you know what I'm saying? And he came, he didn't say what he said. So, but, so there's a lot of people who's coming out and they're coming to me with the shit. Like, I'm like, look, what y'all doing is making, there's a big war to be fought, a war of like systemic racism. It's a thing, right? And I'm dedicated to that war. You know what I'm saying? It's not like some violent, bloody war. I hope not, but it's a war of like information and communication, getting our point across articulately. So, but y'all keep hitting me with these little tiny goofy battles that I just don't really want to deal with. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it's it is necessary for me to do it because if you're my friend, let me let me give you my a real black dude's experience and perspective. Yeah. In an intelligent way. I'm not yelling at nobody. I'm not I'm not condemning white people or anybody. You know what I'm saying? Like my videos, I've been I've done a couple of videos on YouTube talking about the shit. And I I said it's not this is not white people's fault. Like right now, this this happened in the past, but it just hasn't been fixed yet. It hasn't been corrected. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So let's fix it. Let's get behind it. Like, man, so we need healing in this country. But the people gotta come together and politics is fucking everybody up, bro. Yep. Bro, even how the fuck did COVID nineteen become political? everything's political bro Everything's you know I've, I've said that i've said and i've said it a few times and my brother's like yo shut the fuck up i'm like it's a blue it's a blue state virus because like 100 percent, it's just that's how it works and it's like i know it's not but it's red states aren't reporting as much and red it just it's how it works out magically and it's and then you take that and you take you take things it's like well yeah that's obviously how it would work and then it's turned into a political monster thing. And I don't know. It, it, the epicenter has become Arizona, which is one of the reddest states. Oh, Arizona now? Yeah. I stopped paying attention. Over the top. I stopped paying attention to COVID. Back once back once I realized back. I didn't really know anyone who had it, and I started yeah. seeing, like, numbers and all I, the... I, was, I know people who are with it. Uh, yeah. I do now, but yeah. I don't know anyone that was, like... But I do feel like it's got to... You gotta let it run its course. It ain't going nowhere. It's not gonna disappear. No. So you gotta let people out and let it, let it run rampant if, it, if that's what it's gonna do. Let people build up antibodies and then just proceed with life. You know what I'm mean? saying? Mm -hmm. You sick, sick here or whatever. I'm pretty sure I had it. You know what I'm saying? In the beginning, you know, um, I went. It was right before the shit was like big, like announced. Yeah. I, I didn't feel good, and I went. I thought I had the flu. And uh, they tested me with the flu. They said, it's not the flu. I said, well, what is it? They said, it's just some viral syndrome. I'm like, well, I said, like the okay. flu? They said, yeah, like the flu. I said, well, can you treat me like the flu? And they said, we don't treat the flu because you're health for healthy people. Yeah. Unless you're old or whatever. Was that before LA Fit? Yeah. Because I remember in LA Fit, two things happened. Mm -hmm. LA Fitness was crazy this year. It was like, I got a text from my... A text that Kobe died, and then the, in the same like hour, I got a text from my mom being like, "The flu has landed in L.A. and you're there." And I was just like, "Holy shit, we need to get the fuck out." It was so bad here, but it could have been COVID, and nobody knew. Yeah, you know what I'm but it was really bad here, bro. That's why I thought I had the flu, but it wasn't the flu. So I'm, but I'm healthy as shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It lasted. I felt sick for like two or three days, and I was fine, but. Um, but I know I know a couple people that was down for like a month, yeah. and they don't know each other and said the exact same things. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So I know it's a real thing, but but I now think, it's a political thing. <laughs> uh, <laughs> now it's a political thing, uh, just like just like everything. So I also want to know this from your perspective. 
do you think we're pretty close to the complete unraveling of uh, the two parties? I, I wish we were, but I don't yeah. think so. You don't think so? I, I wish we were, bro. I hate both of them motherfuckers, bro. I'm curious. But we need the love party. We, we, we need a, a, a rational middle party. The you love know? party. The love party? That's catchy. No. I like it. This is what people need, bro. And it takes strong dudes like us to push this message. We need, people need to embrace the fact that the most powerful currency is love. Mm -hmm. 100%. And people need to start adopting that and putting that in their heart because a lot of this shit will get mitigated and we will get to some healing. But right now, people have the spirit of being right. You know what I'm saying? Just want to yeah. be right and arguing and, and no. Being a loving person is what you're doing. Like, let me just, I don't want to say nothing or hurt my friend's feelings. So let me yeah. just chill and understand it for real. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Cause that's the thing. I never want to post anything. I think of my friends, like I don't want to hurt so-and-so feelings. I'm not going to say that. Yeah. I get nothing out of saying that right now, but nothing great is going to happen to me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I don't want to offend anybody. Now, if I say something that's empirically true and it offends somebody, it must be, they must have something in their heart that ain't right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm not intentionally going to say anything that's going to hurt anybody. And if I do, it's a mistake. And I would humbly apologize and ask them for my for their forgiveness. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? But we need love and on a bigger scale, like blacks and whites need to fuck with each other more. Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying like have real meaningful relationships. You know what I'm saying you're my boy, like you're my bro, like mm -hmm. you and Dana are my family. You don't even know, bro. I was dating somebody that tried to say Dana was on gear, mm -hmm. and the shit ended over that. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna tell you the story, bro. All right. It, it's not. A, it's not a game. Like like people, I fuck with. I fuck with. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So you know, and what's right is right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? This person was saying like, I know for a fact. I said, stop saying that. That's yeah. impossible. You know for a fact. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I don't even know for a fact, but I choose to believe her because she's my friend and she's not yeah. a liar. I don't. I believe she's not a liar. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? You don't even realize you're trying to prove a point, but you're offending me by offending my friend. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, but I, but, but anyway, I fuck with you, you're my bro. There's other, there's another, there's other dudes that hit me up to like podcast and shit. I'm like, yeah. I'm cool. <laughs> yeah. They want to have a black dude, you know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. And they don't give a fuck about me and my perspective. They wanted the black dude to, you know, to yeah. be. To relative. use you as a. Uh, yeah, as a, as as a like, con. Uh, I mean, there's an element of like, I feel like I, I couldn't have this public conversation with anyone other than a black person. Right. Or else it's just two white dudes that like are assuming they know. Right, you know? right. Like, I assume I know a lot of shit. Like, I can look at it and, you know, I have a, a pretty aggressive victim mentality speech right. that I've had forever. Right. And I look at this situation now and it's like, yeah, it's fucking accountability. Like Mike took you, you took accountability for your kids and you said, I'm gonna stop this shit right now. But let's, let's keep this in mind though, bro. Yeah. There's people that can argue me up and down the wall on why beating their kids is, is a good thing. Yeah. And I can't argue that. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Just for me, this is my choice, right? Yeah. Um, also there's people and black people like part of my me not physically beating my kids when they fucked up was to not continue a tradition of slavery. Mm -hmm. However, there's people that don't realize that that's where we got that from. Mm -hmm. They may think that's just how it is. Think about this in North Korea, people can say, oh, they're fucking stupid. They think that this guy is a God or whatever. They're not stupid. That's all they know. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, when the first wave of Africans was brought to this country, a lot of our tongue was cut out so we couldn't communicate our language to the, the new ones, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So 
the culture stopped immediately right there. So blacks in America, if we don't go dig for our, our for history, we don't know our history starts at slavery at the plantation. Yeah. So all we know, so the things that other people complain about black people, we learned it here in America on the plantations. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's not this is not behavior. Yeah. You know, yeah, I was like, I was gonna say that like I, I don't like I feel weird that I don't have culture. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I don't have something to latch on to be like, oh, this is my culture. Mm -hmm. So it it feels weird and it and I think when other people push culture so hard, right. it, it makes me feel uncomfortable because I don't have a culture that like is a specific thing that I can put a name on. You know, it's like, wh what do I have? I have, I have uh, outdoor white culture. <laughs> like, what, what, what the fuck is that? Like, oh, so you do have you a culture and your no, shit I, culture. You yeah, know. I know mm -hmm. that I have. I, I have it. I, there's just no name for it. You know what I mean? I and then, you, you, and okay. then, but I, I guess what what I didn't realize was. Uh, black. What you're what you're saying is, and for I guess because people are listening to this, but black culture was very recently uh, molded a certain way and given characteristics that aren't right. That if you're not paying attention, you, you won't be aware of. And I think right. the beat the beating your kids thing is a very interesting thing because that that's something that like because I did I I grew up in a in a in a in a school that was fucking dude. 80% white in elementary school and then when I was in uh when I was in high school it was like 70% white 30% black and that's right. the one thing I noticed was uh there was always a little bit more violence would escalate faster with right. black kids and then when right. I went to Philly and I went to school that's when I was like I was in culture shock of like how fast things would escalate um there was just so many things that like my friends were getting robbed and beat up by black dudes. And I was like, what the fuck? Yeah. Like I've never met people like this. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and for me to just look at it for face value, I guess is saying like, Oh yeah, it's just, they're assholes. Right. Right. But then, but then I guess you saying that like, well, no, yeah. it, it was, it's it learned, you know? Yeah, you know okay. <laughs> it, is all, it is what it is. Listen, you can go, go down to like Crips and Bloods, red and blue. Red and blue, Democrat, Republican. Yeah. You know what I mean? Everything about this country is is based on like extreme levels of violence and nobody backs an eye. Nobody backs an eye to invade a country or have a war somewhere. Nobody's thinking about they're talking about looting from rock from protests and riots. No one's talking about collateral damage, like dead human beings mm -hmm. in these little tiny countries that you know, our brave warriors going out to fight under false pretenses because these le these coward leaders mm -hmm. won't go do it themselves. And it's all about fucking money. Yeah. War is big business, huge business. I know personally um, dudes out in the Middle East. I lived in the Middle East for a year and I met guys, Americans, who became multimillionaires selling electric generators to our military out there because they write big checks and should a should a break? They just take it, fix it, sell somebody else, sell them a new one, big checks, eight hundred thousand dollars a pop. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. But that's one small thing. It's so many contracts, American contractors out there just cashing in with war. But there's people dying, our people dying, and those people over there dying. And yeah. I, I hate saying our people, their people, just people. Yeah. This man is not a terrorist because he's fighting me in war. I'm in his country. And he's a young man in his military. What are you supposed to do? Like, now nah, you guys are good. Go ahead. Here's my gun. No, people can't. People don't even think about that shit. They, oh, yeah. terrorists. That's not terrorists. Which is why I spend so much time just sitting back. Which is why, like, uh, you know, I don't say much publicly yeah. because you know, with with even fucking my diet, with my training, I've noticed that every three years, like, I'm a different person. I learn more. I learn more compassion. I learn how to think different. I learn a different outlook. So I may have thoughts, but like, I'm not going to go on Instagram and be like, here's my thoughts. These are going to be forever. Correct. Fuck you. You know what I mean? And I, unfortunately, I don't think anyone has that wherewithal right now that like, you might not, I, you, I know you're yelling really loud, but you might not be right. There's that possibility. 
And I think that that sucks. And I yeah, think they don't want to hear anyone else yell at them. And uh, yeah, it's just bro. shitty. It's, it's fascinating, man. Like, people jump out the window. And listen, and the shit they're talking about really don't necessarily have an impact or bearing on their lives. But they're still willing to go and offend a bunch of people. Right. And, you know, but we'll talk offline. The most, I've seen some of the most bizarre shit these past couple weeks. <laughs> yeah. I'm just like, wow, bro. Like, wow. And I'm not even judging these guys because I know that, you know, I have a, a decent level of understanding and self-awareness and I work on it. You know, yeah. I meditate. I try to like, you know, have control over myself. And one thing I don't want to allow is external, external stimuli influence me to do some shit that I, I shouldn't do. Yeah. I've done that but back in the past. I've grown past that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, so, but people, just haven't reached that level yet. So they're just willing to just say ridiculous shit and don't even think. And, you know, it's unfortunate for them, but I, I do feel like, like you said, every three years you feel like you change. Like we all grow and we all have room to be better. Mm -hmm. And and just because somebody might say something that seems insensitive, I'm not like exiting that person out. It's just like, I'll be quiet. Maybe when we get in a situation to really have a conversation, we have a conversation, Yeah, you know? Um, I'm all about community. Like, let's talk. I know that if I can sit down and talk with somebody, they can, you know, we can come to some common ground. Yeah. You know, I'm not gonna. There's people that that's jumped out the window, said some wild shit. I DM them and like have a conversation. I'm not gonna sensationalize it yeah. by commenting on their shit. Make a public where they feel like they gotta flex extra hard to come back yeah, at you because people are gonna read it. Yeah. People say things, and other people affect, like I know comments affect me. Like people. Yep. My school, bro. I'm not gonna act like they don't, but I gotta learn to not, to not react. I'll I'll snap back and clown their ass. You know what I'm saying? I get paid. Yeah. You know? I'm not gonna say something against what I feel and believe. You know? And um, with you, bro, when you were talking about how it makes you want to get defensive and go back into yeah. that, uh, that's not the right. You know, that's not the right. Thing no, and that's why I don't do it. That's why. That initial, and normally that's what I always, that initial reaction I get, I'm like, oh, that's emotion. Give me a second, and now let me think with a clear head. And I think that. At the end of the day, I have a lot of faith and truth mm -hmm. and what's right always prevailing. All the times that I've, my name's been thrown under the bus, like with the Richard dude from Miami or whatever, yeah. people would really try hard a real hard attempt to make me look bad. I'm like, it's cool. Let's see who's still standing when the dust is all fucking settled. Yeah, you know I mean? very, I'm very old, true. You know, and, and the same with you, like they, these weirdos gonna say whatever. If your silence is violent, like, no, it's not. Yeah. Bro, it's funny, we got the protest, we out there, I'm laughing at so many signs, I'm like, not really. Silence isn't violence. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm just yeah. being an asshole and clowning and shit, but, you know, people just fucking, I'm gonna tell you this. I was gonna say people just wanna be a part of something, which is true, but I, uh, during the protests, um, I'm gonna tell you this, this is real shit. When the police was out there, bro, it was fucking like nothing crack, but it was so close to crack. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It was very hot. The mayor had the police stand down. Bro, it was the most chill shit ever. Yeah. I saw you. I saw you say that about how like it just because yeah. the other team's there, you know. All of a sudden, the other team showed up to your field, and it's yeah. like you feel it. Yeah. So, but with that, I got to really, I guess, relax and just enjoy the experience. And I got emotional for a minute because I'm looking around, and it just felt so good to see so many other races out fighting for something that don't is not a white dude getting fucked up. It wasn't a Hispanic lady that got fucked up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it made that. me feel so good. And because I'm a, I will go shoulder to shoulder with anybody, any, any race, any creed that's fighting oppression or unfair treatment. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm with you. I got you. I, I'll hop out of my comfy surrounding. Let's go, let's go to work. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So to see other people doing that, it made me feel real good, bro. I got a little emotional for a second. I didn't cry though. I didn't cry. Uh, yeah, I, I, saw, I saw Mike Rashid crying at the front. Yeah. <laughs> I felt 
good inside, man. Like just for the um like the underlying fabric of humans, I think is good. You know I, I think so too. Yeah. I'm gonna just focus on that. I know people wanna say people are going to say things that will offend me. I don't think it'll be intentional. Maybe it will, but people will change. And also I feel like a shift is happening, a paradigm shift is happening. And the people who are bigots will be on the fringe. They're not gonna be Yeah, I agree too. They're gonna be weird, isolated people. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And fuck it. it, it Cause I really don't care about I'm not one of those guys that pray racism go away. I don't give a shit. Because racism don't stand up in man to man. Nobody is it doesn't happen. I care about getting rid of for real, like the system of racism. The yeah. shit that's not overt, the shit that you don't see. You know what I'm saying? So systemic racism is a thing. And I just want fair treatment for everybody. Bro. Yeah. Everybody. I agree. Even the LBGTQ community, mm -hmm. I don't have people in that. Like I don't, but who am I to deny? Like it's just bizarre to me that people get get involved in other people's love life. Yeah. Like I care about what you do so much. <laughs> so I will stand up and fight with them. Yeah. You know, because that's the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. I mean, so I'll make fun of them probably while I'm out there. <laughs> once we get comfortable with yeah, each other. Once <laughs> yeah. But you know, I just like to have fun and I'm goofy. So yeah. But now, but now bro, we gotta fix this shit with love. Real yeah. Shit. I agree that love party. Yeah. I'll vote for you if you run for the love party. All right, cool. All right, I don't know about run though. No. <laughs> right, we gotta get Who would be a good candidate? I think Dana. Dana. He'd win easy. Dana. So Dana would be in charge of the love party. Whoop! Entering Dana. Come here. Easy. Yeah. Mike wants you to run for president, president, president of the United States. No, 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 fuck it, queen. Oh, queen. Oh, here you go, queen of the United States. And queen of the United States. And you're gonna be, and you're gonna be in the, uh, in charge of the love party. It's in the middle. It, it only takes rational people that love things. Yeah, we take the good from the red and the blue and make it love. What yeah, you, you take the red and the blue and you take the good parts and you mix together and make it love. Mm -hmm. I mean, what color would it be? I think it's green. I guess purple. our color is purple, right? <laughs> purple color, yeah. I like it. Oh, All right, let's set it up. Oh, yeah. Red and blue equals purple. <laughs> yeah. Idiot. Dummy. All right, we'll set it up. <laughs> what will be our animal mascot? Animal mascot. Kaya? No, that's, Kaya's right here. She's the pit bull. Kaya. All right. Come here. Everybody that's good. Kaya. Back up. Come here. I like that. Oh, or an owl. I like your owl vibes. Oh, yeah. Hold on. Jess, can you hand me that uh, Minerva yeah. over there? Here's, uh, I gotta come up with more names, but all my owls are named Minerva. All the owls. Oh, I didn't realize you had like owl collections. I like that. And shit, our logo is an owl. Yeah, Remember? I know that, I know that. Yeah. I forgot about that. I dig it, I feel like it should be an owl. I think that's a safer mascot than a pit bull. A pit bull still seems like it promotes a little bit, of, you know, but an owl is way more violent and dangerous. I'm aware of that, <laughs> but it all, yeah, it seems a little more calculated so, uh, and majestic. I don't think y'all get this where you live at, but I, in our, uh, Alaska, mm -hmm. those bull moose, have you seen those shits? Yes, yeah, so we have, I mean, I got moose in my house. The, Every the morning I see moose. The fucking huge giant little ones? Uh, so we have two females that live by our house right now. I'd say that they're... They're young, so I would say that they're like 700 pounds and 1,000 pounds. So they're small, but they're still like, they could fuck my car up. I seen, there's a video going around right now. Oh, uh, Cameron, Cameron, uh, Cameron Lewis, Cameron Haynes, Cameron Haynes. Okay. He's on his IG. It's fucking bizarre. Moose video? I'll check it out. There's one on Instagram I saw. It, this fucking moose. Was a giant, a giant mm -hmm. was in a trap, so up to here, right? And it gets free, Rob. Uh, I'm t sprinted, someone's calling it sprinted, me. It sprinted through the snow so effortlessly. Yeah, it was it. So, so intimidating, bro. Nature is savage as fuck. Human yeah. beings, we're not shit. You know we're pretty far detached from real nature. Fuck. Yeah. That shit was so big and so powerful. 
they do whatever they want. And they don't even work out. No, just naturally. And they could probably jump over my car if they wanted. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they can do whatever they want. That's just crazy. But yeah, man, Rob, I love you, bro. I love you, man. I miss you. I haven't seen you in a long time. This is nice seeing you. Yeah, for sure, man. I like that we talk every uh, every four months we talk, and it feels like we talk every day. Catch up real quick. And it's like that. The vibe, the energy is real, so we don't have to talk every day. No, of course not. So, oh, man. But, yeah. but um, uh, I I got real cool with this guy, Casey Neistat, out here. Yeah, I know Casey. I don't know Casey. I know of Casey. Y'all would love each other, too. It'll be, you know what I'm saying? He's yeah. a genuine dude. Dope Seems as like fuck. it. Dope as fuck. His brother is dope, too. That's my guy. His name is Dean. So um, next time you come to Cali, we'll have a little fucking new squad gathering. Right. Have a good time. We'll do some wild shit. Off the grid. You know I saying? like that. I like that. Take a couple hours and midgets and who knows what happens. Some what? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We can do that. Yeah, bro. I got to get out of here, though, man. All right, my man. Well, I appreciate you talking to me. No doubt, bro. No doubt. I got to look up that uh, the Black Wall Street thing. That sounds interesting. I wrote yeah. that down. Yeah. I'll send you some stuff, bro. Okay, yeah. Text to text me anything. I'm always down to, to look I'm at stuff. I'm actually working on a documentary. Uh-huh. An American history documentary. Oh. So I'm gathering a lot of, I'm researching a ton of shit right now. So I'm producing it myself. So I'm doing all the research. Hell you know yeah. Hell yeah. So I'll see some of it. And okay. You can listen to it. And bro, yeah. it, listen, bro, when you read this stuff, it's not, I'm not trying to make us out to be victims. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I'm just pointing out factual things that mm. have never been addressed. And yeah. that if people were aware of it, I feel like people can act accordingly because my first time going to Germany, I thought it, I didn't know any better, but I just thought it was gonna be some racist, Nazi, skinhead shit. And it was so different. Yeah. And the people, when we would talk about like the Holocaust and World War II, the German people were so like embarrassed of that yeah. part of their history. They talk openly about it. They teach about the Holocaust in grade school. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying in America, in the South, there was this big movement. These women called the Daughters of the Confederate. They they got fucking. They put a lot of money into politicians, into the school board to get the history books to say different. They had a different narrative of the South. It didn't talk about slavery, and when it did. It, it made it seem like slaves no were happy, like yeah. they were happy, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And they they erected all of those, because you know, the Confederate lost the war, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. This period of time, they erected a bunch of Confederate general statues mm-hmm. and a whole different narrative. There's all these songs about General Lee and all these fucking guys making people think they were heroes. Yeah. And they were really fucking, you know, bad people. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So we haven't gotten to that level to where we can talk, educate uh, children and people on the real history of the United States. Yeah. We're barely getting out of, we're a young, young country. And we're barely getting out of still trying to like hide it and mask it. So, you know what I mean? But I feel like education is very important just so people can talk about it. You know, if if we gotta feel bad about it, just feel bad about it. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Hug it out and move forward. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I think there's a huge there's a huge issue of recognizing the problem, acknowledging it, and right. then taking accountability of like, okay, what can I do to change? Correct. Correct. And I think that I, unfortunately, I, I I feel like there's just pieces missing on all sides of the puzzle, and I think that's what needs to come together. Right. So I don't and know. That all comes down to education and. Yeah. We all have Google. We all can look into information and not from biased websites or not looking for shit that yep. supports your agenda. Yeah. Feelings. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just fuck my feelings. I want truth. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So um, that's what people got to do. You know, just learn how to research that list. Yeah. So, well, I appreciate the convo, man. No well, appreciate you. All right, my man. Well, I, I got to get going. You got to get going. Good talking to you. When are you in Cali again? Uh, I don't have any travel plans till FitCon. Okay. I'm not, I just shut all my traveling down. I realized that like how much I like Montana. Right, right. I got you. You know, yeah. like, like, uh, I mean, really, really blessed in the fact that like COVID didn't touch here. Right. 
Right. Um, re- everything's back up and running completely normal. And like, you know, hearing everybody else masks and I just, it just yeah. seems like it's, I don't know. I'm not, I don't think I'm ready to travel yet. I like it here too much. <laughs> no, I feel you. It's inconvenience, but yeah. No, I get it. I get it's it. All cool. It's part of the world. Shit happens. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. No, I get you. Cool. All right, Rob. All right, my man. Good talking to you. And you're invited out here whenever you want. I don't want to invite myself though. Like, well, hey, you're on. invited. I got tons of houses. Okay. Um, <laughs> we got we got cool stuff to do. Dana says you're invited. Hey, hey, normal people say normal people say like I got the you know I got a room in the back. He said I got a ton of houses. <laughs> well, I'm that's my new. I'm trying to do the Airbnb thing, long term wealth. Bro, I want to talk to you about that because yeah, I want to. That's something that I want to get into. I got but you. Actually, Gary talking about getting starting out with a duplex. Okay. It out. Yeah. but I'm very interested in that. So I have a pretty good understanding on a lot of that stuff. Okay, um, cool. And then the next thing I'm, I'm stepping into is storage units. And that's I, like I need to come out there and talk to you. doing big boy projects. Yeah. But I, I have a really good, so like my Airbnb business, the way that I'm doing it, I didn't really take a hit through this COVID thing when travel stopped, dope, you know? Dope. So I, I have a, a pretty good understanding on it that I, I totally, yeah. I'll answer any questions you want. All right, cool. And I bet prices is good out there, huh? I mean, I c- you can't find a house for under four hundred. Uh, um, I mean, prices—they're not like Cali prices. Like, I know okay. Cali—you got to spend a million dollars. Compared to here, that's great. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's disrespectful out here. Yeah, know? it's it's sort of rough, but you you pay rent for it, you know? Yeah. I mean, right. Rent out here is twelve hundred bucks. Rent out there is what forty two hundred. Yeah, easy. So yeah, so I mean, it's. Forty two hundred to be a roommate. <laughs> exactly, exactly, with roommates. So all right, bro. All right, we'll talk. I'll come out there. Come out cool. There. Yeah, whenever you want, man. I'm here. We're ready for you. All right. All, all right, right bro. See you, See you man. Okay.